In the last lecture, we have seen what is the standard concept of a st statistical test for testing two hypotheses, a null hypothesis against an alternative hypothesis. We have already said that to construct such a test, typically you first fix the level of the test, which controls the type 1 error. And then, if you're lucky, you can also, if you have several choices of tests which all have the same type 1 error, or at least satisfy your guarantee on the type 1 error, you can then go and try to select one that has a good power, um, that means a small type 2 error. I've also introduced that there is a concept of the uniformly most powerful test, which is sort of, if you're given a set of tests of level alpha, you can select the one that is the best among all of them and said that this is rare, so in practice often it doesn't happen. There is one situation where it does happen, um, and this is described in the name in Pearson lemma, and I want to describe it because I think it's also an interesting concept, the kind of test that it is used. Namely, this is a likelihood ratio test. And very intuitively, a likelihood ratio test is something I find very, very intuitive. So you want to test a hypothesis against another hypothesis. Now, in standard statistics, how do we evaluate how plausible is a certain statistical, like a certain density for a given data? We compute the likelihood. We always compute what is the likelihood to observe this data given a certain parameter. And now, the likelihood ratio test simply says, well, if the likelihood in the set H0 is larger than in the likelihood H1, then I probably retain H0, and if not, I reject it. So this is simply a very straightforward kind of concept um, and I'd like to make it a bit more formal now. So first of all, I'm going to write down what the theorem is. Uh, well, it's called a theorem now, even though in the literature this is called the name and Pearson lemma, but I called it a theorem. I think it's a great statement. Uh, so suppose, so we want to test, we test a hypothesis H0, the parameter theta is theta 0 against H1, the parameter is theta 1. So this is now a case where we test two simple hypotheses against each other. A hypothesis is called simple if it just contains one parameter. So we just have either the parameter is, H0, is theta 0 or the parameter is theta 1. There's nothing else. These are the two cases that we consider. Um, and now, um, consider the test statistics. I just write um, t, which is la the, li the, li nah, the likelihood. The likelihood of theta 1 over the likelihood of theta 2, uh, sorry, theta 0 in this case. And so what is it? So we have these two parameters, theta 1 and theta 0, that we might want to compare. Um, and now what is the likelihood? The likelihood is the product we have independent samples, so I didn't write all these assumptions, but we're in the standard setting, so i equals 1 to n, the density corresponding to xi given theta 1 over the thing, uh, the same thing, but now corresponding to theta 0. Okay, so what is the probability or the likelihood that this data has been generated if parameter theta 1 is 2 and what is uh, if theta 0 is true? And this is called the likelihood ratio. And now we reject the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, when this um, statistic t is larger than a certain threshold. Assume we reject h0 if t is larger than some parameter k. k. Uh, well, for some parameter k. And now the question is, how do we need to choose k? Now, if we choose k such that now we fix the level, namely we want to know that the, under the null hypothesis 0, 1, theta 1, 
the probability that t is larger than k. So this is um, when the type 1 error occurs. We are, the true parameter is theta 0, but we end up in our rejection region when the statistic is larger than this k. If we choose k such that this is true, such that, sorry, such that this is alpha, so this is not the level, then um, this is the most powerful level alpha test. So no matter which level alpha test, so we constructed a level alpha test by setting k such that the statement is true. And now the statement of the theorem is that this leads to the most powerful test. Okay. Um, the theorem is, I would say, moderately practical in the sense that it, often you do not want to test two two-point hypotheses against each other, but still I think it's a very nice and beautiful result. Um, and it also shows you what the principle of a likelihood ratio test is. And you can this also more, uh, so I don't want to prove that theorem, I just want to give you the statement. But what I want to show you is now um, how you could also have a more general version of this general of this likelihood ratio test. So I write it here. So likelihood um, more general likelihood ratio test. So this works as follows. So our parameter space. It's again theta, and now we assume we have a set of parameters, so we don't lo no longer assume that we have a point or a simple hypothesis, we just say theta zero is any set in this space, oh, hard to read, mm. and then we define the set theta one, which is just a complement of theta zero, theta zero complement. And then we consider the test statistic um, I mean sometimes I mean the naive one would be t tilde which is just the supremum over theta and theta zero oh, sorry this must be the capital theta zero likelihood of theta divided by the supremum over theta in now theta 1 likelihood of theta so now we look at the worst case um, now this is a bit um, inconvenient because here the, in, the, in this more general case the way I've taken it from a different book um, now they exchange so if you look at the previous one we had the uh, we had the alternative hypothesis on the top and the null hypothesis at the bottom and then we look for a rejection region that is the, so we reject when the statistic is really large now it's going to be the other way around so we have the null hypothesis here and the alternative hypothesis here so we need to reject when this is small so of course it doesn't really matter I can always um, invert this uh, ratio and then can convert the two into each other so this is the test statistic or um, what people often, or even simpler, people often um, simply instead of looking at theta 1, they simply look at the whole parameter space. And this is what is typically done because it's mathematically easier in the, in the end. So we look at the supremum of theta in uh, theta 0, L of theta divided by the supremum of theta in all of theta, L of theta, and then we reject, so and then we define, so uh, I need to consider, cons uh, use the next page, so we consider the test statistic and we determine a parameter lambda such that the rejection region rejection region is of the form 
R is T is smaller than this parameter lambda. Okay, um, so this is how these tests work. So now we don't have just two point hypotheses, and now the key difference between what we had previously is now each the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis consist of many parameters. And simply we now look at the supremum. So what is the most so and observe that this is essentially the maximum likelihood estimator. So we no, look at among all the null hypotheses, uh, among all elements in the null hypothesis, what is the maximum likelihood um, of, of the data we have seen? And for all elements in the alternative hypothesis, what is the likelihood? And please reject if that term is small, which means that the term on top is much less likely than the term on the bottom. Okay. And maybe you can think about at home why we can simply replace or why it makes sense to replace in the bottom this, or at least why it doesn't hurt to replace the theta 1 here by the whole parameter space. Um, maybe think about that for a second. So the trick, of course, when you want to build something like that in practice is how to construct a, a rejection region and how to define this parameter lambda. So in practice, The difficulty is, uh, I mean, there are several difficulties. Difficulty, maybe I write difficulties are, difficulties are, so compute all the su subs, the supreme, I mean, maybe I don't write subs, but <laughs> suprema. Um, you might need to have an optimization problem to do that, for example. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's not. But you need to fix R and fix lambda, and this needs to happen in theory. So this is in practice. But this, of course, you need to do in theory. I mean, you need to prove a statement that tells you what is um, the region in lambda and that you have the correct level alpha. And this is, of course, difficult. Um, okay, the other remark is that the name in Pearson lemma for this more general likelihood ratio test not necessarily holds, but still I think it is a compelling candidate for a test if you don't know anything else. The likelihood ratio thing might be a thing to start with, um, at least if you manage to get a grip on 